In the past year, I found myself hit with a sudden wave of nostalgia, a need to revisit my past and embrace the beautiful pastel world that was my early childhood. We're talking princesses, we're talking fantasy, we're talking ponies. My little pony. Hell yeah! Children's media moves so very quickly, so by the time I was born in 1989, the My Little Pony show was already into sporadic reruns, and by the time I was old enough to watch TV and remember, it was long since gone. In fact, I was honestly shocked to find out the show was only being produced from 1986 to 1987, and it was in a half-hour block alongside several interchanged Hasbro cartoons, meaning they were only about 15 minutes long. So, in the grand scheme of things, there was actually a lot less My Little Pony than I imagined there to be. My experience with the franchise was largely with the toys. I didn't have a big collection, but I loved them. My favorites were Cherry Treats and Baby Blue Ember. Did I know these names? No! I knew one of them had red hair like Ariel and one of them was a baby. That's it. I had no idea until recently how vast and how strange the line got. Truly some weird stuff. And this is just generation one. Things have obviously grown far beyond anything my younger self could have imagined. Anyway, given that I never could find the show on TV, I would constantly rent a tape of the episode Escape from Katrina, which I was convinced was movie length. In reality, it's a half-hour special that was produced before they went to series and aired later on the show proper. Meaning the animation style was a little different and the tone hadn't quite been hammered out yet? Given that this was what I watched over and over again, I think it gave me a false impression of what My Little Pony is, because I decided decided to finally watch the whole series on Tubi. At last, childhood me would finally see everything she was missing, fill in the My Little Pony-sized gap in her heart. Look, all they want is our hair. After that, they'll let us go. I don't know, Gusty. I think they want more than that. It's kinda dumb. A little dumb. And look, it's a show about multicolored ponies in a fantasy world. I'm not expecting Shakespeare. But like... The Katrina special had a scary villain, there were some stakes and stuff, the ponies had vague personalities, uh, but the show uh, wasn't really concerned with that sort of thing. I don't know what kind of focus group feedback they got on the two specials they aired before they made the series, but obviously they thought it was a little too dark for children. <laughs> and I mean, fine, but I think there's a balance between a rainbow violently murdering someone and like... Baby ponies want ice cream. We're out of ice cream. <gasps> Unheard of. That's impossible. And some of the plots were sort of bizarre choices for children anyway. They were just done in a sillier tone. Like, there's a four-parter that's straight up an allegory for human trafficking. And I would argue that's worse than them treating it with a little more gravity, you know? We're gonna make you pay for what you did to our children. Yep. <laughs> But at its best, My Little Pony served as a fun escape for little kids, a venture into a world of fantasy and friendship, where magic was real and adorable tiny horsies roamed the pastures and lived in a very expensive playset your parents probably didn't buy you. Wow, you've got My Little Pony Paradise Estate! Isn't it beautiful? It's cute, it's fun, it definitely ignited my imagination. All these years later, I still want a sea pony. And in 2010, the series was rejuvenated with Friendship is Magic, making My Little Pony an even bigger phenomenon than it was in the 80s. With another generation on the way, it looks like these ponies are going to be inspiring people of all ages for years to come. But we're not here to talk about any of that. We're here to talk about My Little Pony's first failed attempt at reviving the franchise. Because believe it or not, they tried it all the way back in 1992. Folks, this is My Little Pony Tales. My Little Pony Tales! My Little Pony Tales! Until recently, I had no idea this even happened, and sometimes I wish I still didn't. It ran for 13 episodes, featuring two stories per episode, and yet it still overstayed its welcome. 
Friends, I have never felt more like I have dodged a bullet, because given how dumb I was back then, had I seen this, I absolutely would have loved this terrible, terrible show simply because it had ponies in it. And it's bad. Oh, a real stinkeroo. I can say with confidence that the original show, no matter how silly, never sunk to these depths. I do not know what kind of dark magics went into producing a disaster of this magnitude, but it is jaw-dropping. I heard her hair fell out in clumps cause she came down with the mumps and now her family's under quarantine. Ostensibly, it takes My Little Pony out of the fantasy genre and dumps them right into the babysitter's club. They're more human-like than ever. They got problems. They got boys. They got baking. They got shopping. And that's a small part of the issue here. This could just be a story with humans in it. There's no magic, no fun little creatures that live nearby, there's not even fantastical ponies. No flutter ponies or sea ponies or unicorns, nothing. Just your standard boring horse. The only difference between this world and ours is their milkshake-based diet, but that is the least of this show's problems. First of all, let's get this out of the way. It just looks bad. The animation's got janky proportions at times. Uh, the ponies are frequently shown from front on, and that is the most unflattering angle. And because they've decided to make the ponies more human, they're constantly walking on two feet. It is unsettling. The way they sit is just creepy, and we see it often. They're not quite anthropomorphic enough for it to not feel jarring every time. I'm sure they didn't have a lot of time or money for this, so I'm pretty forgiving on some of this stuff, including the coloring issues, but in one episode, it is kind of plot important. A character is meant to have pink hair and yellow eyes, matching the description of a long-lost princess. She has blue hair and blue eyes, but they reveal that she's been dyeing her hair this whole time. Her eye color, however, is never explained, and in fact only shifts colors to yellow in one shot when they reveal she was the princess all along. It was clearly an error, and one that's pretty glaring considering how much the plot centers on it. A funnier example of a coloring issue is this shot where one of the ponies is given crazy pink eye. But that's all just aesthetic stuff. The real problem lies in, like, the show itself. My Little Pony Tales focuses primarily on seven core ponies. Sweetheart, the nice one, Patch, the prankster, Bright Eyes, the smart one, Clover, the lucky one, Melody, the singer, Starlight, the workaholic, and Bon Bon, the one that likes to eat. <laughs> if you wanted to buy toys of these ponies, however, you'd better hope you were located somewhere randomly in Europe, because that's the only place they release them. Oh gee, My Little Pony was a cynical attempt to sell toys. My Little Pony Tales truly was in it for the craft of storytelling. <laughs> anyway, there was a pony for everyone. Any one of these horsies could be you! You may never be a magical unicorn, but you could feasibly become a janitor? Oh, just great. That's what I always wanted to be. A chubby old head. Yeah. Look, this isn't a dig at people who do these things in real life, but when you translate it to ponies, we've got some real losers here. I mean, it just really takes the magic out of the fantasy you're looking for in My Little Pony. Ponies are themed to whatever their interests or jobs are, so when you place them into our boring world, you get some truly terrible outcomes. Like, what kind of dump did life take on you if you ended up the pony with the garden hose on its ass? That's your life now. You're hose guy forever. There are so many weirdos in the background of this show, every time there's a group shot, I'm looking for all the reject ponies. Lucky for you, I've collected some of the best of the worst here. So here goes. <coughs> Cash register pony, postman pony, teacher pony, janitor pony, corn on the cob pony, twice. Crossing guard pony, dollar sign pony, grocery basket pony, also twice. Lighting Equipment Pony, Number 3 Pony, Not Even Number 1 Pony, Garbage Man Pony, Old Fashioned Caliper Pony, Cashier Pony, Carney Pony, Blue Ribbon Pony, Knitting Pony, Burger Pony, Butler Pony, Policeman Pony, Chef Pony, Footstool Pony, Director Pony, Wrench Pony, Coach Ponies, Delivery Truck Pony, and Recycling Pony. I also want to give a shout out to the pony that seems to be based on downtown Julie Brown, not because I think she's a loser or anything, just that it's such a specific time capsule it feels strange not to note it. And why are there normal horses too? Are they slaves? They don't talk, they just pull around carriages and do manual labor for them. What kind of fucked up society is this? Like, you didn't have to include this. 
They could have just not shown horses. It just brings up too many questions. The numerator is the number to the left or above the line in a fraction and the denominator. Add on top of that the naming conventions from the original series being blended with their more modern refresh and you get sentences like, did you hear that Justin finally proposed to Moonglow? Did you hear that Justin finally proposed to Moonglow? Justin and Moonglow, the ultimate power couple. Here's the thing, no little kid wanted to see ponies just like us. We had Megan for that. Megan got to hang out with the ponies and be their friend. No one wants to see ponies acting like humans. It's not like we watched My Little Pony and hoped desperately for a Planet of the Apes situation where ponies ruled the world. It's utterly mundane. We don't want to watch ponies freak out over homework. We don't want to see them paying bills. Why do these children also have jobs? And Starlight's apparently working two jobs at the ice cream shop slash hairstyling salon. Because, uh, it's the same building? But I really truly can't. We're taking inventory. These ponies are 10 years old. I don't know what that translates to in pony years, but one of them is still learning how to read. Their math is bunny and turtle based. And yet teacher pony still appoints Starlight as her substitute. In what world is a grade schooler supposed to teach the rest of the class? This episode ends with everyone almost dying in a cave, so you can see how well that went. <laughs> Not that Teacher Pony is too concerned with their well-being, because the school's exit is a slide. That is a safety violation and not handicap accessible. Why do these ponies keep tripping and getting hit by stuff? I swear every five seconds someone is falling over. Like, there's comedic effect, and then there's me wondering if maybe the animators had a grudge against these ponies. My ankle, it, it, it's twisted. How could you hurt yourself the day before the show? <laughs> Yeah, okay, so they're babies, but they're also taking care of babies, because it's never too early to train them up to be parents. I'm a My Little Pony Mommy, and I feel so motherly when I see pick a baby ponies looking all around at me. I realize this is pretty typical of franchises aimed at girls back then in general, but they have severely overestimated how much we want to see babies on screen. I loved the baby pony toys, but it was never my wish to see a pony crying in a diaper. And put on your little diaper to look so separate. Near the end of the original run, a lot of that was slipping in because they were attempting to push these toys, and it just got increasingly worse because they were depicted on the show as far uglier and annoying than the toys ever were. Babysitting, babysitting, babies fussing, crying, spitting. Clearly the style of storytelling carried over into My Little Pony Tales, because there's just a ton of these diaped up idiots running around and screaming and causing issues, and it's just a complete nightmare. An assault on all senses. <laughs> This isn't what the baby pony toys promised me. Remember Baby Moon Dancer? Adorable. I didn't want this. I never wanted this. But it's not just babies crying. Oh no, all of our characters are crying all the time. If you want to see ponies crying, My Little Pony Tales has got a lifetime supply of it. <laughs> I think the most critical misstep in this whole process was when they decided to give the ponies anxiety. Truly, you have never suffered until you've watched 26 15-minute segments of ponies singing about their deepest, darkest secrets. Don't know what I do, I die if people knew my secrets. Life's as bleak as it can be. Tried out for the team, and it was gruesome. I know I failed, I know it. My my pie is ruined! <laughs> My cake, you ruined it! Like, I think there's a difference between teaching kids about life and just assaulting the viewers with constant misery. But the worst part is that most of it is of their own making. This show has you actively rooting for their demise. So maybe someone realized the original show didn't, like, give the ponies much of a personality or whatever, and they decided they should change that by making the characters crappy and mean-spirited, I guess. 
Every episode, they're just mean, and not in a way that teaches any sort of lesson. Except for sometimes, when the lesson is you can be terrible and suffer no consequences. Everyone is jealous or catty and constantly trying to trick each other. There is no depth to which these jerks won't sink. I get that to err is pony and forgiveness is divine, but there's a line here. It doesn't seem like anyone ever treats each other nice at all. They're just looking for the next opportunity to throw each other under the bus and get what's theirs. All because they heard my brother start to cough and sneeze. Well, I would like a little attention, please. One time, Bon Bon is jealous of all the attention her sick baby brother is getting. So she concocts a plan to turn things around by faking her own illness. And that would be bad enough, but immediately she starts acting like a diva and ordering everyone around. Uh, when you see Twink, tell him to bring more cookies. <laughs> Amber, Twink, what a mess! Yeah, one of the ponies is named Twink. <laughs> Her father and brother are bringing in stacks of magazines in the rain, and she asked them to go back because the issue is from last month? Like, the entire stack? Why did they buy an entire stack of one issue? But anyway, when she fesses up, they're just happy she isn't sick and she doesn't get in trouble. And then they get sick and start ordering her around like a bunch of divas too, so I guess that's okay. And also she got the attention she wanted, so things worked out in the end? But now I've got all the attention I can handle. Isn't it great? She isn't as bad as Clover, at least. She gets jealous of her sister and ends up faking whole-ass amnesia. Your name is Clover, isn't it? I is it? This ends with her performing in the Nutcracker as the Harlequin doll, and honestly, Clown Pony is me. I am the clown. I've never seen such an accurate visual representation of myself. The diva thing is a recurring motif. All of these assholes are one minor event away from being the queen bitch of Ponyland. Melody is cast as the star in the Shakes Pony play and gets a big head about it. So they have to prank her to take her down a peg. <laughs> Okay, okay, where's my throne? <laughs> this is really the dumbest thing I've ever seen. I will say that this episode is pretty progressive, though, since Patch plays the prince to her princess. In a similar turn of events, Melody is practicing for the Battle of the Bands and gets so caught up in envisioning the win that she forgets to hire a babysitter for her siblings. Upon receiving the news that she can't compete, her bandmates immediately abandon her in pursuit of their own fame and fortune. From now on, we're the rockin' beats, minus one. And maybe we'll be just as good, maybe better. Good luck. <sighs> Melody decides the perfect solution is to just bring the babies to the concert. And these kids are causing pure chaos. They're straight up launching themselves into the air with no regard to their lives or the laws of physics. <laughs> A set falls on top of another band, and this crowd of absolute animals cheers it on. And all of Melody's pony friends who were too busy to babysit for her are just watching the concert at the ice cream shop? Dirty liars! Melody learns a harsh lesson about responsibility by winning the contest, getting congratulated for the win by her mom, and suffering no consequences. I won't tell mom what you did if you don't tell her what I did. Oh, congratulations on winning the contest. Speaking of concerts, Clover wins some tickets to see their favorite band. This apparently ties into her seemingly supernaturally good luck. Unrelated to that, she has a prophetic dream about winning the tickets at the beginning of the episode. And I don't know why that happened or why her power of prophecy is focused on something so uninteresting. Anyway, her luck-powered win makes all the other ponies hold a grudge against her, but not enough of a grudge to prevent them from kissing her ass to try and get her to take them as her plus one. Not wanting to hurt anyone's feelings, she ends up inviting all of them, which is rewarded by them chasing her down like a bloodthirsty mob. Get her! By far the most insane case of being rewarded for terrible behavior is the episode The Tea Party. The girls are squatting in a seemingly abandoned house to have their tea parties when a family shows up to move in. But the girls think they're being robbed and proceed to terrorize them with a whole ass Home Alone setup. We're talking straight up assault. You don't belong here. Neither do you. <laughs> family surrenders, they find out that maybe you shouldn't attack people when you're squatting in someone's house. 
Then they're told they're brave little ponies for doing it? I think you're all very brave little ponies. Do you really want to tell kids that this is not only acceptable, but courageous? Not only that, but after they help them clean up, the family builds them their own clubhouse. So illegal activities are rewarded, and oh yeah, the mom asks to hang out in their club, and they have the gall to tell her it's private. Go fuck yourselves. Oh, you can make the tea, Mrs. Barrington, but, well, I'm afraid you can't come to the party. It's a, a private club. Fuck you, fuck you, fuck you, you're cool, and fuck you, I'm out! I didn't even go over the first half of the episode, where the girls are debating whether or not they should let boys into the tea party club. Clover reacts violently to this suggestion! And it's not that any boy has expressed interest in joining, they're just concerned about looking prejudiced if they don't invite, like, one token boy to join. Which leads me into my next topic, which is that this show hates boys with a passion. What do we want with boys? The original My Little Pony featured very little representation on that front, so this series attempts to be more inclusive. But here's where the finger on the monkey's paw curls. These boys are all the scum of the earth! Not a single guy on this show is redeemable, except maybe Janitor Pony. They're bullies at best, criminals at worst. But, I don't know, maybe they were made that way by society, man. I mean, listen to this. Sweet and gentle, sentimental, the things that most boys hide. <sighs> Just another example of toxic masculinity. In the Great Lemonade Stand Wars, Ace, Lancer, and Teddy are mad that the girls are making money, jangles in Ponyland currency, so they decide to make a rival lemonade stand. They suck at making lemonade, so Ace uses his powers of seduction on Bon Bon to get the recipe. Say, you wouldn't like to go bike riding with me after school, would ya? <laughs> this is the best time I've ever had. Your lemonade's the best I've ever tasted. I'd, uh love to know how you make it. Well... I forgot I had to be somewhere. So long, Ace. Thanks for the ride. Well, he took me bike riding, and I thought he liked me, and he asked me about the lemonade, and oh, I'm so sorry. My little pony tails. Lancer has a crisis of conscience and gives the girls an iced tea recipe, which Teddy likes, and Ace assaults him. This ends with them bitching at each other to credits. Cool, but by far the biggest asshole is Teddy. This fucker. He's just like an abusive bully, and not in a fun way. But the show keeps presenting scenarios where he does something fucked up and then saying he's actually a good guy, even though we see no evidence of this. The lengths they go to to excuse him are just gross, to be honest. <laughs> Look, the dodo hit the dum-dum button. <laughs> Lesser, you're so lame. Just for laughs, Teddy sabotages their swim competition by dressing up as a sea monster, which somehow means they lose, even though he reveals his prank to everyone right there. To Sweetheart, this was just a cry for attention, apparently. She's Teddy's sole friend and wants to keep the peace. He isn't really mean, he just does mean things for attention. The other girls say they aren't coming to her birthday party if Teddy is coming, so Lancer tricks them all onto a boat and strands them at sea until they sign a peace treaty? See, the beginning of that sentence sounded normal, didn't it? But then they took a swerve. This is what it's like watching My Little Pony Tales. And all the girls did was get sabotaged and refuse to hang out with the guy. What are they agreeing to do with this treaty that they weren't already doing? Sorry, bud. If you act like an asshole, then people don't want to spend time with you. You don't have to like bullies. One time, he breaks Melody's tape recorder, and then, when they get mad at him, goes hog-wild on a trash can. When the tape recorder proceeds to go missing, he's put on trial by the class. Teacher Pony says that if these grade schoolers find him guilty, he's suspended for three days. You can be the judge. 
can I be the prosecutor? None of this seems particularly legal, but whatever. In case you're wondering, it turns out this one time it actually wasn't him, but that's beside the point. They have no reason to believe it wasn't him because of how incredibly terrible he is the rest of the time. And perhaps the lesson could have been like the boy who cried wolf. If you're a known liar, then no one will believe you when you're telling the truth. But they never get into that. The other ponies are jerks for jumping to conclusions. Sweetheart goes to his defense, but even in the song about him not being that bad, he's depicted as a merciless bastard. You don't know the boy like I do. You don't know how he can be. But whenever he does something bad, he looks kind of guilty and does something nice, which means he's good? That's just abuse. That's what abusers do. They hurt people and then act nice and then hurt them again in a vicious cycle. You get no points for trying to mend a problem you purposefully caused. There is no moment where Teddy redeems himself for the awful things he does, because after this episode, he goes right back to being an asshole, and especially to Sweetheart, who is supposedly his one friend. Oh, Teddy, why, why do I waste my time with you? All you know how to do is make other ponies feel bad. The most bizarre episode centered around Teddy is Blue Ribbon Blues, where he's being a jerk-off like usual, and when he's challenged on that, he decides he must prove he is good at something other than bullying. Like, uh, farming. I guess. So they take a trip down to his cousin Corny's farm, where they sing about how cool farm work is. The combine machine, it does two jobs. It cuts down the corn stalks and strips off the cows. I cannot tell you how far removed this is from anything resembling My Little Pony at this point, but then it starts to get downright insane. Teddy spends most of his time bullying farm animals, which leads to a rivalry with this random pig. And that's dumb enough already, but apparently this pig is intelligent enough that it understands there was a rivalry and seeks revenge on him by stealing his teddy bear. He's gonna win a blue ribbon tomorrow at the fair. <laughs> For what? Being the fattest and the ugliest? <laughs> I hope you lose tomorrow! The episode climaxes with a harrowing pig rescue. My brain leaks out of my ears and I question all of my life choices leading up to this point. Okay, so the main reason Teddy is such a douchebag, according to this show, is because he is massively insecure about owning a teddy bear. You would think, with pony naming conventions and all, it would be obvious that he owns a teddy bear, but apparently not. Several of his plots center on this particular issue. Teddy has a teddy bear, teddy has a teddy bear, teddy has a teddy bear. There's one where the other boys find out about his bear, and then they're gonna blackmail him about it, but their solution? Double blackmail! The girls trick them into dressing up as babies and take pictures of them, saying they'll release them if they ever tell his secret, thus ending the episode. <laughs> Why did this air? Who decided this was okay? I, I don't know. I just don't know anymore. <laughs> So the initial blackmail was bad, but the follow-up blackmail was good. Take note, kids. If someone is threatening to tell your secret, get them back even harder by framing them as adult babies. And Teddy is totally cool with blackmail if he's the one giving it out. After he steals Bon Bon's diary, he makes her do a bunch of stuff for him in exchange for not blabbing about what's in it. But when Sweetheart strongly implies his teddy bear secret could get out, then the blackmails cancel out each other. Even though at the beginning of the Great Lemonade Stand Wars, the girls seemed to think it was hilarious to steal Bon Bon's diary, so they're just a big bunch of hypocrites. You stick. Anyway, the girls think the boys are stinky, but what if they really actually liked each other? 
Sweetheart is definitely caught up in a toxic relationship with Teddy at any rate. Remember, kids, if someone is teasing you, that means they really like you and it's okay. When it's revealed that Lancer and Bright Eyes have a thing for each other, their friends perform a sort of Summer Nights in Greece style song about how to catch the other's attention. The boys, of course, say he should just be an asshole to her. The girls say she has to dress up like an idiot and turn into a ditz. Want the girls at your feet? Don't be friendly or sweet. It's a common fact, putting on an act helps you to attract. Right around this time, both them and the audience begin to hallucinate evil little ponies floating around them. <laughs> now you can't insult her! She'll love it! Trust me! And I mean, the point is, they were giving bad advice and they should just be themselves. But I kind of feel like the audience is getting mixed messages here. I don't get it! She didn't follow any of our directions! Yeah, he was a real loser in my book. Starlight certainly didn't learn anything from this, because she sings about changing up her look to impress Ace. And why wouldn't she want to impress him? He's such a dreamboat. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much 99% of the scenes with the boys are them laughing hysterically at someone's misfortune. Patch is also given a makeover at one point, and I don't know why the other ponies look so sinister before they do it. This is because they think she may be a princess, so she's gotta learn how to act like one. Also, princesses can't be fat. A princess must look tailored and trim as she can be. You don't want those jelly beans, give them all to me! Eating disorders! Keeping with the dress-up theme, the school is holding a masquerade ball where the children will come as whatever they want to be when they grow up, despite the fact some of them have part-time jobs already. We're taking inventory. In this universe, every career has a costume, apparently. I also kind of figured this was some sort of messed up system where their cutie marks predetermined what career path they would be on regardless of their interests. I mean, you don't see Garbage Can Pony working at the ice cream shop, do you? Anyway, every other damn episode, Bon Bon's one running personality trait is that she likes to eat and cook and she's always stuffing her face. But for this episode, and this episode only, she wants to be a model. However, this makes her worried, and not without precedent, that her friends will make fun of her. Patch wants to be a clown, and she's worried she's gonna look like an idiot for wanting to be a model? Half of the ponies at the masquerade are dressed as wizards in top hats. I think you'll be fine. This one doesn't even have any eyes. Your costume is a hat, a necklace, and a bracelet. Shut up. So when Bon Bon arrives at the party, she thinks everyone is laughing at her and she runs away. But wouldn't you know it, it turns out they were actually laughing because Patch was juggling watermelons <laughs> and dropped one on her head. <laughs> Apparently, we aren't supposed to feel bad for Patch, who appears to be hurt both physically and emotionally by this. But when they play this back on tape later, suddenly everyone is saying their lines and laughing before she drops the watermelon on her head, meaning they've either doctored the footage or bent time and space. Stupid Bon Bon nearly falls off of a cliff for her stupid assumptions. <coughs> Why are people always falling off of cliffs? Here, however, is where I get super creeped out. Yes, there was a line My Little Pony Tales did not cross until this moment, believe it or not. Bon Bon sings a song about wanting to be a model, and for whatever reason, they've decided to utilize every one of the artist's sick fetishes. Bon Bon is showing off her ass and posing in a bikini, and let me tell you, I was disturbed. Mine is the best dream of all. I could not believe that this aired, and I am sorry to inform you, we are all on watch list now for having witnessed it. Why? Who is this for? I'm asking honestly. Whoever this is aimed at, it's no one you want to know. Yeah. Speaking of old watermelon concussion, Patch's personality is prankster. And I'm not talking whoopee cushions, I mean she's just messed up. She calls up all of her friends, posing as this guy in their favorite band, and telling them they want to date with him. She then requests that they meet alone in the clock tower in the middle of the night, and all of these dummies are willing to just waltz into what is clearly a kidnapping scenario at best. Apparently, this was hilarious. You should have seen your face running up the steps! I thought you were gonna bust a gun! <laughs> Patch, we're gonna bust you! Patch then sings a song about how great it is to pull pranks and hurt her friend's feelings. But how is it a prank to take their food? That's just stealing. As is usual, the solution in My Little Pony Tales is to do the same mean thing back. So they create this elaborate ruse and make her believe she's encountered aliens who want to steal her brain. How... 
How did they create this big ass UFO? Where did they get the time or the jangles? Amazing what you can do with cardboard and Christmas lights, isn't it? So did Patch learn that hurting her friend's feelings isn't worth a cheap laugh? Of course not! The lesson she takes away from this is that their practical joke was good, and therefore all practical jokes are good, and she should continue doing what she was doing. I can think of a few ponies I'd like to pull this on. The weirdest part about this episode is that later on, Patch does in fact meet some aliens. Because yes, in My Little Pony Tales, aliens are real. That in itself might sound crazy to you, but it's even more bonkers than you think. As part of a school lesson, Teacher Pony brings in this guy with a hot air balloon. Your guess is as good as mine. This is actually just a shameless excuse to bring her side piece to class, because there is definitely some sort of history between these two. And uh-oh, look at that. Hot Air Balloon Man just can't do anything more than greet them before he takes a tea break in the middle of class. So they just leave all the kids to do whatever while they have a date alone? Due to equal parts these two being horny and Patch being an asshole, she steals the hot air balloon to go have an adventure. In an unlikely sequence of events, uh, because it was all realistic up until this point, she is able to fly the balloon, but a bird pops it and they start to fall toward a swarm of sharks? Where are they? <laughs> And then they get rescued by, like, a bunch of Pegasus ponies who are also aliens? <laughs> because... what? Can I visit you sometime? The future is filled with possibilities! Until then, farewell! I'm just lost as to why this was written, animated, and put on our television screens. I can't even say if it was to sell toys, because it seems like My Little Pony Tales was going rogue and didn't want you to buy anything. I'm just baffled. Simply baffled. By the way, fuck all happens to Patch for stealing that hot air balloon. Yeah. So, uh, I guess this counts as something magic and fantastical. They did venture occasionally into that world, but in the context of this show, it came off incredibly strange. For instance, there's an episode where Clover thinks a teapot she found in the dump has cursed her with bad luck. There! I wish I'd never found you! Oh no! Her logic is doubly weird because every other episode she's in is about how clumsy she is anyway. Oh gosh, I'm so clumsy. But no, a magic teapot did it this time because it rained, I guess. <gasps> Hello, Patch. Also canonical? Ghosts! One of the girls tells a story about a pony named Squire who set out to slay a dragon and got knocked into a hole instead. There's some line about him climbing out of the hole, but it is heavily implied that this is his death. Apparently, this was a true story, because his ghost now haunts this house. So through this whole series, there's a dead pony floating around Sweetheart's home unbeknownst to her. It was just a dream. Or maybe it wasn't. Now I know what you're saying, that's pretty dark, but at least the point of impact was off screen and we didn't get to see it graphically. Well, that's about to change! Bright Eyes goes to their pony equivalent of Hawaii, and everyone has some pretty racist preconceptions about the locals. Bon Bon thinks they might be cannibals, and we get to see a pony being cooked alive. Sweetheart, however, is the sickest of them all. She heard that they sometimes feed ponies into volcanoes. So we get not one, but two fantasy sequences of these monsters shoving a pony into hot, molten lava. No! No, please! Into the volcano, little pony! No! My little pony tails! <laughs> After this, I laughed until I was in tears. <laughs> Absolutely terrible. Sometimes these men and ponies should sure act strange. <clears throat> the last episode is about pollution. Oh, is that all? For a minute I thought it was something important. Some garbage is clogging up Big Pony River, but these morons can't figure out that the random shit they keep throwing into it might be connected. They think there's some pollution mastermind out there waiting to get caught. 
This ends up flooding the entire town, a disaster of biblical proportions. This is some real dinosaur series finale energy, except unfortunately these ponies live. I'd say this was the one time there's actually a lesson learned, but this was something Clover was already taught when she threw her cursed teapot into the lake. F minus for growth. And they all walk off weirdly into the distance, never to be seen again. The janky animation is a fitting ending to a terrible, terrible series. Let's live. Frankly, I don't really know why this show exists. I suppose I can say it was worth trying something different, but every episode was so wildly off the mark it was unreal. When it wasn't mean, it was just bizarre. I know I keep asking this, but it's a worthwhile question. Who was this for? Apparently not me, because it never once crossed my radar. Seeing this now was like looking into an alternate dimension. Like, what if My Little Pony was mean and ugly? I did, however, get a lot of amusement out of it, at least. And when I wasn't laughing, I was staring at the screen with my jaw on the floor. Truly a magnificently misbegotten show. I think we can all be grateful the franchise eventually did find a refresh that works, making this a weird pop culture artifact. But hey, if you liked it, good for you. There are definitely people nostalgic for it, and my opinion shouldn't take away your enjoyment. If you're curious about revisiting this or seeing it for the first time, this and the original My Little Pony are currently on Tubi for free, floating around the internet like garbage down Big Pony River. Now if you'll excuse me, I've got some blackmail to send out.